My name is uh, Tara Glanders and I'm the projects manager for the Allied Arts Council. So just a little bit about the Allied Arts Council. We're a 63 year old multidisciplinary arts organization. We operate CASA, which has a robust education and gallery program. We manage AAC Works, a fine arts and craft store on 7th Street. And we produce a variety of events such as art days, outside downtown concert series and Christmas at CASA. And we also provide a lot of information to artists about paid opportunities. And we also offer this series artwork, uh, which is our professional development uh, series eight or nine times a year. Uh, but let me introduce you uh, to tonight's speaker, Darcy Logan, who I'm sure many of you are uh, familiar with. Um, Darcy has worked in not-for-profit public arts administration since 1998, both professionally and as a volunteer. He is currently the curator and gallery service manager with the Allied Arts Council of Lethbridge, where he oversees the gallery at CASA. Previously, his work for the Bowman Arts Center and the Prairie Art Gallery, as well as contract work for the Center for Creative Arts, Alberta Foundation for the Arts, and the Grand Prairie Regional College Department of Arts. Uh, Darcy has sat on an extensive number of art committees and juries in both participatory and advisory roles, as well as being an episodic and ongoing volunteer for many organizations. He is also a practicing artist with a diverse studio practice and exhibition record, having received his BFA from the University of Lethbridge. Uh, so Darcy, if you'd like to uh, take it away. Sure. Um... Thanks for uh, tuning in, everybody. I'm going to be talking about preparing uh, exhibition packages for submission to uh, galleries and uh, other sorts of adjudication processes. Um, as uh, Tara alluded to, I've sat on an extensive number of adjudication committees and juries uh, with various organizations in my professional capacity. I've also drafted and generated a lot of gallery submissions in my artistic practice to uh, send out to galleries as well. So I think I have a fairly balanced perspective from both sides, the administrative side and uh, the artistic side. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to share a few tips, uh, tricks and techniques with you when you're developing uh, a submission. And this is gonna be primarily focused on applying for galleries in the public realm, uh, artist run centers, uh, public galleries, cultural centers, not so much for uh, commercial galleries. That's uh, a, a different animal and something that I don't have as much familiarity with, but uh, the kind of templates I'm going to show you will be uh, easily applicable and transferable to um, a wide variety of venues that are seeking proposals. So I will start sharing I'm having a, a bit of a some trouble here. Sorry, let me try that again. There we go, sorry about that. Submit, preparing submission packages for exhibition, a brief primer. And as I mentioned, this is going to be um, a kind of template that you will be able to use as you're looking at different calls for submissions. So there's a, a few standard elements in a submission package. And I have used uh, the signifier of an envelope and pages when I'm talking about this. While there's a lot of galleries that still accept hard copy proposals, a lot have moved over to strictly digital submissions, but the core components and elements will be the same. The first thing you have to have in a submission package is a cover letter. And a cover letter introduces yourself and articulates your interest in having an exhibition of the work. For example, 
My name is Darcy Logan and I'm a painter living in Lethbridge, Alberta. I'm interested in exhibiting a suite of landscape paintings that I've prepared. You'll find in this package and then you'll list everything else that's in it. The next you have your project proposal and your project proposal outlines what you would like to exhibit. And this can be completed work or a proposal for work that you would uh, like to exhibit in the future. Um, some calls for submissions uh, ask for uh, already completed work. So maybe if you're applying for uh, a thematic group show, you might um, do a submission package for work that's already finished. But a lot of galleries are looking for uh, work that you're proposing to create, and they will be looking for uh, history and a that you've been able to show facility in, in creating the sort of work that you're proposing. Oh, there's an example. I would like to exhibit a series of 15 photographs that document the changes of the seasons, or I'd like to complete a large a series of large format portraits that feature community leaders along with a written component that tells your story. Your project proposal should be very clear and concise so that uh, the adjudication committee or the curators will not be able to mistake uh, what the intent of your submission is about. Um, put together a piece of body of work, find your unique voice and avoid the general or generic. The third thing is your artist statement. This should clearly articulate what you do and why you do it. It explains what your work or artistic practice is about and what inspires you to to be a producer, a cultural producer. Keep it simple, avoid cliches, uh, avoid pedantic language and florid language. Fourth thing, images and a list of works. Uh, a selection of representative images and a corresponding list with title, date, size, and medium. Again, choose your strongest work and try to keep the images thematically cohesive. And the final thing, a CV or a biography. And your CV is a living document that charts your professional practice. And as your practice grows and matures, that document will uh, grow and mature along with you. If I could just give you one word of advice, and I could probably stop here, but I will go further, is read the call for submissions closely. Um, every gallery, what I'm providing you is a, a template so that you will have all the information generated, but each gallery has its own unique and idiosyncratic um, way that they would like you to send a submission package. So you've got to read it to very carefully and make sure you follow their guidelines and stylistic conventions that they want. So I'll talk a little bit more about these elements. Your cover letter. A cover letter briefly introduces yourself and articulates your interest in having an exhibition of your work. It's important to refer to why or what you were applying for. A thematic group show, a project, or a solo exhibition, and it lists what you have attached in the package. And the next piece, your project proposal. Your project proposal should outline the work you're wanting to share, whether that's a completed body of work or a body of work that's currently in progress as I uh, previously mentioned. And it's important to give as much detail as you can, the number of pieces, uh, the material, how the, how the pieces are made, how they're installed, sizes, how you envision them in the space, uh, provide as much detail as you can so that the people looking at your project proposal have a very clear understanding of what it is you're wanting to um, articulate and install in their exhibition space. Quite often galleries will have a floor plan or a layout on their website so you can look at that um, as you're making those sorts of determinations. It's also important I think to be as open and flexible as you can 
Um, for example, I have 10 pieces completed and will be producing eight more in advance of the exhibition. I am open to working with you to edit back the number of pieces to accommodate your space. I think showing uh, flexibility is really important because um, it's a relationship that's built between the gallery and the artist and your willingness to accommodate and show flexibility uh, oftentimes will help strengthen that relationship. And invite the curator or jury for a studio visit, if at all possible. If they're in the same um, community as you or close, you can invite them to come and talk in situ in your studio. Oftentimes the conversations and the dialogue that's elicited um, when you're talking in a studio visit um, can help give a lot more clarity. And if you are selected, there'll most likely be a studio visit anyway, but it doesn't hurt to bring um, the jury or curators to, to speak. And if you're not selected, you've gone that much further in getting some constructive uh, critique and dialogue around your work, maybe learning a little bit more and uh, just maturing your practice. And your artist statement. Your artist statement should clearly articulate what you do and why you do it. It explains what your work and or artistic practice is about and what inspires you. Again, keep it simple, avoid cliches, uh, don't be pedantic and try to avoid over flowery, florid language. In your absence, um, your artist statement should answer why. Uh, why you decided to produce this body of work, uh, why the gallery going public or audience should care about this work, um, why it was important to you. If you're not there to speak directly, this document is, is a way to communicate all these ideas. Um, avoid, introduce the material aspect, then discuss the conceptual framework, and conclude by discussing how the two things relate. So if you've decided to work, make sculptures in metal, you talk about that, you discuss the areas of research or inspiration that have informed this body of work, and then talk about how these two things are related, why you decided to talk about this area of research and realize it in these sorts of materials. Avoid obfuscation, jargon, and most importantly, buzzwords. Uh, again, I'm, I can't iterate enough how important um, transparency and clarity is when you are uh, trying to communicate to a prospective jury or a curator what, what you would like to do. So I've included three statements that kind of all say the same thing, but say it very differently. And I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. I investigate locomotive corporeal bipedalism in an urban context and subsequently deal with visual data deconstruction and reconstruction within the creative laboratory of the studio. Alone I wander lost in the warm breeze with the sensation of the city enveloping me. Flush with excitement and inspiration, I return to my studio where I let my spirit soar and my brush dance. Finally, I'm interested in exploring my community as a pedestrian and capturing photographs that I later translate into large acrylic paintings. So that last one, they've, they've all said the same thing, but the last one is, has said it clearly and concisely. Um, it's not that you can't write in these other ways if you are a creative writer or a poet, or if you are an academic writer, if that's your area of interest in research. Uh, and quite possibly a, a curatorial statement or didactic in, in the exhibition itself um, can be a little more, um, use some of this academic language or even the jargon, but for your gallery proposal, um, your submission, it should be very clear. And the arts are a very, we require technical language in order to, to talk about what we do with other people. So there's gonna be some technical language that you're going to have to say, but for the most part, try and keep it as clear and concise as you can. Uh, that way, if you articulate yourself clearly and cogently, you avoid misreading, misunderstanding, 
and provide as much clarity as possible. And you'll also need to include a list of works and accompanying images. So a selection of representative images and a corresponding list with title, date, size, and medium. Again, choose your strongest work and try to keep the images thematically cohesive. And you want good quality, properly lit images in your submission package. It's not enough to just pull out your phone and uh, quickly snap something. There's been a presentation in this series, I believe it was last year by Angeline Simon, who um, gave some tips about documenting your work. So I would encourage you to uh, look that up as well. Send only the number of images that they're asking for and in the format that they require. So whether they're JPEGs or their tips, or um, if there's constraints around the size that they want to see, um, make sure you've read the call closely and that you are providing um, exactly what they've asked for. Uh, your list should include the date, the medium, the size, um, all the relevant information that presents a clear picture as to what your body of work that you're submitting is. And then any other support documentation that may be asked for, whether those are um, video links um, or links to uh, web content, depending on whether it's media-based or not. And your curriculum vitae. For the love of God, put your contact information on your curriculum, on your CV. Um, I can't tell you the number of times that um, I've had a, a submission package come in and even successfully adjudicated it and accepted it. And um, if it's come in via email, perhaps that email was attached to a job that the person's no longer with or an academic institution that they're no longer at. And that mode of, of contact and uh, dialogue is not there anymore. And I go to get their contact information from their CV and it's not there. So I have no way of tracking this person down. So make sure your CV has your phone number and your mailing address on it. Um, for emerging artists, list as much as you can and edit that back as you gain experience. Um, as I said, it's a living document that charts the trajectory of your practice. So if you're an emerging artist and perhaps you've only ever had your inaugural exhibition at, in a gallery at a coffee shop, by all means, uh, put that on. But as your practice develops and matures over time, you're going to be adding more and more to that list. And then you will start to edit uh, back the things at the bottom. The other thing is uh, don't be disingenuous or try to pad your CV because it's, uh, it's very transparent. When you're going through a, um, a submissions package and you read the CV and they've got a list to a, a bunch of spurious sounding exhibitions and uh, things that are, are suspect, it's, you, you can tell and it challenges the trust that you try to build um, in that relationship between the institution and the artist. In conclusion, an adjudication is a process of elimination. For example, if a curator or jury has five exhibition spots and hundreds of submissions, which has happened, one of the first ways to cull submissions is to disregard the ones that are incomplete, improperly prepared, or didn't follow instructions. And that's regardless of the quality of the work. And uh, that's happened to me. And I've had submissions come in from um, really well-respected and well-exhibited artists and uh, educators and academics who have improperly completed their submissions, um, submission package. And the easiest way, if you're gonna have to cull 95 uh, submissions, that's the first thing that I would do. And I know a lot of people at other institutions do it's, it. They haven't followed the guide, the simple guidelines that have been uh, laid out. So you can disregard those because you're going to have to, to cull down to a small amount. Um, and conversely, a professional and well put together submission from an artist with a weaker body of work 
might mean that they are selected or make an impression. It shows a, a, a commitment and discipline to their artistic practice if they have really put together a strong proposal package and uh, followed all the guidelines closely. I would also caution you to make sure you have someone edit your documents for style and mistakes. The last thing you want to do is hit send and the next day go through and look at it and realize, oh, okay, I made mistakes in, in spelling and in punctuation um, because that doesn't reflect well on you and your uh, professional comportment. Um, Make sure your package is well articulated, concise, and as professional as you can make it because um, you're applying for a job, which is basically what this package is. It's an application and it's your first impression with a, a gallery or an adjudication committee. And the other thing I'd like to maybe just uh, end on as well, is there is a lot of competition when you're um, sending out packages, whether they're for group shows or solo exhibitions, uh, other sorts of projects. So don't let a rejection be a ref don't allow it to reflect your practice because it's not an indictment against what you do. It's not a value judgment on the quality of the work. There's so many other considerations that go into um, how institutions build their curatorial programs. I've sent out so many myself as an artist. I've been rejected so many times, but I've also been accepted into things. What you have to do is, is sow those seeds wide. Um, don't get dis discouraged, keep sending them out. Keep looking up different calls for different uh, public institutions and uh, uh, just don't give up and don't get discouraged. And that kind of uh, concludes my presentation. And as I said, this is a template. And so as you read closely, every institution and adjudication committee will be looking for something a little different, but you will have all this information collated in one central place that will make it very easy for you to adapt it to the specifics of um, the call from the various um, gallery or institution that you're applying to. So I will um, start taking some questions. Yeah, so if anyone has questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A box. Thank you so much, Darcy, that was super informative. And I will start reading if there's anything in the chat. As, as well, um, my role as a gallery services manager at CASA is to provide support for things like this. So even if you don't have a question now, please by all means uh, contact me at CASA and I can help with artist statements, with uh, formatting your CV, with uh, portfolio reviews, all those sorts of things. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, we have a few questions now. Um, so the first one is, how can artists be aware of open calls? Most calls now are listed um, on the internet. And there's a few, you'll find a few places that are aggregators of uh, this sort of information. Locally, one of the a great resource is uh, Arts and Lethbridge put out by the AAC. And usually at the bottom, they will list um, calls for different uh, group shows and uh, gallery shows. As well, the Alberta Foundation for the Arts aggregates and does calls for submissions from various community partners and institutions around the province and puts those in one place. Uh, the other thing is just to investigate galleries that you find interesting or that you'd like to show at and go on their website and find out what their uh, requirements are. Quite often, um, Call, um, submissions aren't taken unsolicited. Usually they'll have a window of time where they will be accepting them and looking at them. Hope that answers your question. Awesome. Yeah, there's even a Facebook group that I'm in that's like an international call for submissions. So there's also like some Facebook groups out there that you could join. Yeah. 
Um, we have another question here for email submissions. Should we send PDF or Word doc? Um, just look at what the requirement of the institution is. So probably generate everything in a Word doc so you can re-edit and uh, change it or add to it as necessary. And if they're looking, some places will look for all that information collated into a single PDF document. Uh, some will say Word document, some might not say anything and you can just uh, maybe send a message to the curator or, or committee about what they'd like to see. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that question, each component should be a separate document or file or should they be all like in one PDF? Uh, okay, so I kind of touched on that a bit. I, and I think this is a, a living archive that you're keeping all these elements like your CV and your artist statement. So I think it's important to keep them as separate documents um, that you can revisit and add to, change, modify. Um, and the, but if they if you if the gallery that you're looking at wants them in one document, then just in that specific instance, um, combine them into one. Mm -hmm. Great, I think that's, oh, we might have one over here. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. I am here on behalf of a family member who used to attend art shows. She has sold her work internationally, but has never been competitive with her work. I would like to help her get more involved. Could you list websites that we can follow for calls? As I mentioned, signing up for um, the Allied Arts Council uh, Arts and Lethbridge newsletter is a good place to start. Um, I used to have a document that listed a bunch of aggregators for that information. Uh, some are now out of date. Um, but I think uh, with that question, I think I will compile a, a another list of those sorts of aggregators so that I can provide it to people. So maybe just reach out to me in a week or two and I will see if I can't provide a document that has a more extensive list of those sorts of opportunities. That'd be great. And then we could also add some because we'll upload this onto the YouTube and then on the uh, description area, we could probably add some links and yeah. stuff like that as well. Yeah, I don't see. Oh, um, should an artist only include formal art education? Is there a way to list workshops or, or, or sorry, or online courses? There's a lot of ways to format your CV. Um, and it's almost it's contingent on on your personal experiences. So if if your exhibition history is more informal and say it's been in a, a gallery at a coffee shop or a nice little gallery display area at a, a local framing shop, uh, by all means, put those in. And if your education experience, say you haven't had the the luxury or privilege of going for a post-secondary art degree and your education has been mostly through workshops and that by all means yeah put those on and and as your practice matures maybe you'll keep them on maybe you'll take them off but you always need a starting place and i think you want to present clearly uh, what your background is and uh, and and celebrate that and uh, share it with whatever adjudication uh, committees or juries are going to be looking at it. Okay, thank you so much, Darcy. I don't think we have any other questions. Uh, Tara, did you want to do any final closing words? Oh, you're on mute. Thanks, Angeline. Um, great information, Darcy. Thank you so much for doing this. I think it's invaluable. Um, uh, our next artwork is going to be November 4th at 6 p.m. Uh, Alberta Music is going to be doing a presentation. They are a nonprofit service organization dedicated to helping people build their careers in the music industry. So if you know of any musicians or if you're interested in that and finding out some more information on how to build a professional career, I think that's going to be a really great um, uh, artwork session for everybody. So that's it. Thanks so much, everybody. Oh, I have one more question. It just popped up. Do you mind, Darcy? No, 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 no. Uh, when conducting a studio visit, would you rather see work in progress or a display of completed works? 
I think you can understand a work in progress by looking at completed works. And so I had talked about when you're doing a proposal of work that proposed work, I, your images are gonna be of completed work because the committee's gotta understand that you have the technical facility to realize whatever it is that you are proposing. And in a studio visit, I think most studios would have a, a selection of things in, in, in progress as well as completed work. So I think just rounds out your practice to be able to see all of those things. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Okay, I do not see any more questions. <laughs> and, and again, please, by all means, reach out to me um, in my professional capacity at CASA uh, to answer any more questions. It's a really, talking about submissions, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And I think I've laid out um, all the, the necessary kind of documents that you would put in it. Um, but it's up to you to start working hard at tailoring that <clears throat> specifically to your own voice um, and then tailoring it again to the requirements of, of the different calls that you're going to be sending it to. So if you're, if you're putting one together and you'd like my professional opinion, um, I'd be happy to look at one if you're developing them. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for coming. Um, yeah, we'll see you all next time, November 4th it was, and we'll upload this on our AAC YouTube as well. So it'll be available there if you ever want to uh, see it again. Thanks. Night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. See ya. Thank you.